Today we'll discuss about exception handling. To give you an overview about the exceptions, exceptions are basically the abnormal termination of your program. Usually, as you already know, there are several different types of error errors that occurs. Few of them uh, may be occurred due to the system, and few of the errors are uh, the logical errors which are uh, in your program. Maybe some of them uh, can be the errors by the compilers. So while developing an application, it is important that you need to handle such kind of uh, such kind of errors, because if you don't handle these errors, uh, your application, your running application, uh, uh, it may suck or uh, uh, it may not execute properly and uh, your customers uh, they may experience uh, several different kind of problems so it is important to handle or address such kind of uh, uh, errors uh, while uh, developing your application so we'll be talking about uh, in detail that what kind of those errors that that can be i'm using a word errors at the moment because uh, uh, usually in java you call them uh, as exceptions Exception is basically the anything that is not normal, that is abnormal. So your program stops to execute. So you need to handle that uh, so that uh, your application may maybe keep on running. For example, you have developed uh, an application for ATM, and uh, during the ATM, uh, it's kind of an application that it should be uh, running uh, all the time. Uh, if, for example, it may experience any kind of uh, uh, error that is unhandled so uh, as a result your application uh, failed to execute uh, so in that situation uh, we need to handle them so let's uh, talk about these exceptions in more detail then. so these are the overviews uh, we'll see uh, i will give you a summary of, of them uh, uh, first uh, we'll be actually it will be uh, talking about the exception handling what are those exceptions uh, more precisely we'll be discussing the difference between the errors and exception uh, so uh, there is a bit difference uh, in both of them uh, then uh, we'll discuss the checked and the unchecked uh, exceptions uh, uh, oh, I'll give you the more details with uh, help of examples uh, and the uh, rest of the things are how you can handle those exceptions uh, and more precisely you can handle it through the try and catch block uh, uh, you need to uh, uh, write it within your code and uh, whenever the exception uh, occurs it will be thrown in the try block and uh, that exception will be handled in the cache block and whatever you want to do you can do it in the uh, cache block uh, so let's go into more detail first of all uh, you must understand what I, what type of errors are there uh, basically there are the three different categories of errors first one is the syntax error runtime error and the logical error Syntax errors are those errors uh, which are basically related to your syntax or your code uh, that you're actually uh, writing uh, in the form of a programming language. So syntax error arise because of the rules of a language have been uh, uh, have not been followed. They are detected by the compiler. For example, uh, syntax can be you're writing uh, int, for example, for the integer to handle the integer values. Int basically it is syntax dependent or it is uh, uh, case sensitive uh, in most of the language and you will have to write it in all in small int so if for example uh, you write i as the capital letter and the nt is the small letter. so this is the basically syntax error and it is usually handled by your compiler so we call them a syntax error similarly there can be more errors uh, related to the syntax as well then we have a runtime errors. Runtime errors are those errors uh, which are usually occurred while uh, your application is running or is it's about to run. So such kind of uh, errors are crucial errors because, uh, or maybe those errors can be while your application is live and it's running and uh, it may come across uh, to a situation when uh, uh, there's something uh, uh, abnormally uh, happens to your application and in that situation your application uh, stops execution so such kind of the error we call them a runtime error and these are the crucial errors then. until and unless you do not handle them during the coding phase so it may result uh, in your uh, uh, I mean uh, uh, 
uh, application stop running uh, and that your users or the clients may come across uh, uh, a lot of problems uh, while using your system or the application. The third type of the error is the logical error. So logical error occurs when a program doesn't perform the way it, it was intended. Because most of the time, uh, for example, uh, if you are developing uh, some kind of uh, algorithm and uh, you are implementing it uh, in your code, and uh, if there comes uh, such kind of error, we call it a logical error. For example, you have, uh, uh, instead of uh, multiplying, you have subtracted it or such kind of things. So these are the logical errors. Uh, that results in uh, the wrong, uh, I mean, output. So it is related to the output, those logical errors there. But uh, there are a few errors uh, which are crucial in the runtime error. So we'll be focusing on this particular error, that is the runtime error. So it occurs while uh, uh, execution of your uh, application. So these are the things uh, which may result your application stop running. So we need to handle them. Okay, runtime errors, for example, I give you an example so that you can get, uh, get a clear picture about it. As I have already given an example, for example, uh, like the int, and uh, you need to write it in uh, all in small. That was the syntax error. And uh, I'll give you the example of uh, the runtime error. For example, uh, in this particular line, you're expecting uh, a user to input integer, right? So there can be a situation when instead of uh, giving input as integer, the user may give some other input like a character. So this is a situation when your compiler was, uh, or uh, your program was expecting the integer to be input. So in that case, if you input some other character, for example, uh, instead of uh, integer, a character is input. So this is the kind of error that occurs during the runtime. Uh, what will happen your program will stop execution and uh, it will uh, uh, come into uh, the normal window or uh, maybe some uh, other uh, kind of situation may occur so you need to handle this situation that uh, you will have to force uh, a user to input uh, that, that he should give you the integer input that's crucial thing if an exception occurs on this line the rest of the lines in the method are skipped and the program is terminated so your program is so you need to handle this situation so that your program may not be terminated because your application is crucial and it will be live uh, over the internet and uh, you, you you cannot uh, actually uh, come to that situation when your application stops running and providing uh, your important services to the clients. So you need to handle it during the code. How we can do that? I will tell you right now. So how you can handle it? You need to handle it through the exception handling. So this is the exception, we call it an exception, because this is the abnormal uh, execution uh, or the abnormal uh, situation occurred in your program. So instead of closing the application, you need to handle it. Right? So how we can do it, we always handle such kind of exceptions, we call them exception, and uh, you handle them through the try and cache block. So try and the cache block first need to understand uh, what is the difference uh, between and what is the purpose of uh, try and cache block. In try block, I am calling it a block because uh, it is representing a block of code and it is represented through these curly brackets. Whatever you have written, it becomes a block. So this is a try block. In the try block, you write all those uh, line of codes uh, which may raise your exceptions or uh, where your uh, uh, it may stop your execution of a program. So you will have to write all those syntax or the code lines in the try block. Similarly, uh, in the try block, whatever the situation uh, that is the abnormally uh, that uh, come, come across. So in that block, your exception is basically thrown. Okay, we'll talk about the throw uh, thing that how it is thrown but there are two different situations in which you will have to explicitly throw by yourself that exception. And uh, there is a, uh, another situation in which your compiler throw the exception automatically. But the important thing is it should be in the try block. So when, uh, wherever a situation or the code which may give you uh, the exception, you need to put it in the try block. And the catch is another block. Uh, I will talk about this argument later on. But uh, I'm talking about this one, uh, that block, uh, uh, before this uh, argument. 
in the cache block usually you handle the exception whenever it is thrown it will be handled right here in the cache block and you need to handle it in an appropriate way right uh, before giving you the example uh, let's talk about uh, what's this argument in this cache block it specifies the type of exception is thrown what type of the exception was there so there are several different types of exceptions are there and uh, there are supporting uh, classes are also available in java we'll talk about it later on but uh, uh, right here you specify what type of exception will be there or uh, exception will be thrown for example it can be related to the input for example it can be related to memory or uh, several different types of exception can be there uh, we'll talk later on so right here you specify the type of exception and uh, accordingly you handle it right here for example uh, the same code uh, where your exception uh, can occur for example scanner dot next in so right here your program was uh, expecting uh, an integer so instead of integer some character is input and accordingly there is a uh, abnormal situation so in that situation the, in, in that uh, try block your exception will be thrown automatically by the compiler and accordingly it will be handled right here in the cache block when it comes to that block uh, it will handle the situation otherwise this cache block is never executed right if there is no abnormal termination cache block will not, never be executed it only executes when the exception is thrown so it will uh, be the responsibility of the cache block to handle that exception and uh, handle it in an appropriate way uh, the way uh, the programmer wants it to be so in that uh, as you can see you have actually printed an exception what what was there uh, try again incorrect input and integer and again scanner dot next line so instead of going into the break statement or exiting the program uh, your program will again be in the running state and it will expect you to input again uh, for the next integer right in the next line so uh, this is the way you can uh, handle the uh, exception that is the appropriate way okay let's more discuss about it uh, as I told you there are several different uh, classes uh, of exceptions are there yeah, for example it all starts with the uh, object then throwable exception and the error these are two different categories we'll talk about them later on in the exceptions as you can see there are several different types of exce exceptions are there and uh, more uh, importantly the IO exception and the runtime exception these are the important ones and another one is the null pointer exception Right, right here, and this is the uh, actually uh, comes into uh, uh, the runtime exception. One of the type is the null pointer exception that usually occurs. So I/O exception input and is related to the input and output, and uh, some are the runtime. Runtime is the situation when uh, uh, your uh, program is being executed, and uh, at that time your exception exception occurs. Uh, so there are several different types of uh, the runtime exceptions there are arithmetic exception null point exception uh, for example index out of bound and uh, such and such uh, and other one are the errors so these are the exceptions usually they are handled more specifically the runtime exceptions are uh, handled by the programmer the rest of them uh, they are handled by the system uh, for example anyone uh, with the for example uh, buff, uh, like your memory overflows or uh, something happens with your processor so these are the situations uh, that need to be handled by the uh, compiler okay we'll discuss uh, about them in later on uh, system errors are thrown by the java virtual machine system errors we're talking about the system errors and a few of them are uh, your runtime errors which are occurred basically uh, in your uh, program so at the moment we're talking about these errors these are the system errors so whenever uh, uh, the situation occurs such kind of the errors are thrown by the java virtual machine and represented in the error class if the error class describes the internal system errors such errors rarely occur if one does this is a little you can do beyond notifying the user and trying to terminate the program gracefully so this is a situation when it occurs for example your uh, you have you do not have a sufficient memory or uh, your processor is not responding so such kind of uh, errors that will that will be dealt by your uh, operating system so it will be thrown by the java virtual machine so we call them a system error uh, the next type is the exceptions uh, which may occur in your program and you need to handle them 
Describe the error caused by your program and the external circumstances. These er errors can be caught and handled by your program. So you need to handle such kind of the exception. Right? So you got the point and then you, got, uh, you have the difference between the exception and the error. So these are two different situations. They are both throwable because they are these situations are thrown uh, by the uh, your compiler or the 